Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. I invite you to stay tuned for the next few minutes as we continue our message entitled The Battle for the Mind. We began this a few weeks ago, and I believe that it's something that time has come for us as Christians to be able to overcome the enemy. And we know that the enemy attacks us in our minds, in our thought life. We began to look at this by talking about destroying strongholds. And a stronghold can be something, yes, that has hold on you, but it could be a place, it could be an addiction, it could be anything that you run into for protection when pressure gets on you. Maybe you run to pornography, maybe you run to some other kind of addiction, and, the, and God wants us to be able to tear down those strongholds. I shared a story with you about that. I'm not going to repeat that story today, but we, I did share a story with you about a man that we call Dad, and uh, Dad's stronghold was alcohol. When he got under pressure, he would run in there. He would run into the alcohol. But the moment that he didn't have that to run into anymore in the sense of mom applying the pressure on him, about his drinking, he began to change and God began to move within his life. And it wasn't long until he was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I want us to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through five. Paul says, for though we walk in the flesh, that means that we live in this real physical body, physical world, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. He says we have this battle but he also says we have weapons to fight it. We, in a few weeks, are going to be talking about the weapons of our warfare. But right now, we're laying the case for the battle of the mind and how we can overcome. We need to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? That means that we judge everything by the Word of God, every thought that comes. We say, okay, does this glorify God? Does this fall in line with the word of God? Those are things that we need to ask when we start dealing with our thought life. And so he says, take every thought captive, meaning bringing them into submission to Jesus Christ and submission to the word. How do we do that? You see, I've discovered over the years and I know I'm reviewing just a little bit with you before we get into our lesson today. But I've discovered over the years that the battle of sin always starts in the mind, in the thought life. And so God is wanting us to be able to take care of those things. Romans chapter 7, verse 19, the Apostle Paul says, For the good that I will to do, that I want to do, I do not, but the evil I will not to do, or I don't want to do, that I practice. So the Apostle Paul understood the battle that we are in. He understood the situations and circumstances that we face. Now, there are four principles that I started talking about a couple of weeks ago, and the first one was this. Don't believe everything that you think. Did you hear that? I said, don't believe everything that you think. Because you see, a lot of the things that we think come directly from the world, from our flesh, 
even from the devil. You say, now, wait a minute. I want to put a guard on my heart and on my mind so that I don't think those things. Well, I think all of us want to do that. But yet in the real world, we cannot always put blinders on ourselves to make ourselves see and think the things that we want to see and think. You know, I mentioned this uh, in one of the teachings that it's often a problem when we go places and um, we see things. And I mentioned that uh, we used to live in Southern Illinois and we were not far from one of the large universities there. And occasionally I would go and walk in the mall in that particular town. And uh, I noticed that a lot of the men, especially the older guys like I am now, I was quite younger in that day, but I noticed that they would uh, sit in the middle of the mall where there was a circle and they would watch all the college girls go by. And um, <laughs> I, I began to call that the circle of lust. And uh, sometimes we cannot keep ourselves from seeing things that happen and seeing things that go on. But God wants us to be able to take those thoughts captive. He wants us to be able to put those things literally out of our hearts and out of our minds. And so we need to begin to guard our minds in the sense that we don't believe everything that we think. We don't believe everything that we see. We don't believe every thought that comes through this mind as to being the truth. The Bible talks about a double-minded person. A double-minded man, he says, is unstable in all his ways. And then the second thing that I began to talk about concerning our minds was this. Guard your mind from garbage. What is the garbage? That's the stuff that we hear and see every day also. There's a little anacronym that goes all the way back to the beginning of computers, especially the personal computers. It's called GIGO, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. And I think that's exactly what happens with a lot of us in the battle for our mind. If we are putting garbage into us, that's what's going to be coming out of us. And so God wants us to watch what we put inside. I mentioned in the teaching before that we have this thing called three natural types of food. One of them is the kind of food that feeds the brain, that's good for you, that it causes you to grow, it causes you to think well. And then there's what we call junk food. Uh, that's sitting around eating the potato chips and, and eating the candy and all of that. And then there's toxic food, things that are poisonous to us. And some of us have problems with certain kinds of food, so you don't eat it. Well, that's the same thing about garbage in, garbage out. And there are two ways that I talked about controlling our minds. One, pray about everything. And two, fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on the things of God. That's what is going to be necessary for all of us. We fix our thoughts on the things of God. Now, a third thing, and this is where I want to go for the rest of the teaching today. Never give up on learning. You see, God wants us to learn. In fact, I call myself a disciple of Jesus Christ. And what does the word disciple literally mean? It means, it means a learner. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Come to me, all you are lab who, are lab who labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I want to read that again. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn, <clears throat> and learn from me. God expects not only faithfulness in our lives, but he expects fruitfulness. And so God is wanting us to learn, to learn the things of the Spirit of God, learn how to function, learn how to produce fruit unto him. If you're really going to learn, you need an extra quality in your life. What is that extra quality? I call it humility. You say, now what does humility have anything to do with learning? The humble person realizes that he doesn't know everything. I've had to do that. You know, I'm educated. I've got a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and a doctor's degree in theology. I've, you know, I've, I've studied and, and I've learned those things. I've earned those. Those are earned degrees. And I thank God for them. But I don't know everything. I have discovered that, that I don't know everything. I remember when I was teaching in Bible school many years ago, there was this situation that came up where people were literally uh, uh, following this one man, this one teacher, because he always had an answer for everything. He always knew everything about everything until he fell into adultery, until he stopped obeying God. But you see, a lot of people were deceived by that. I want to tell you, if you really want to learn, you need the quality of humility of saying, I don't know everything. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I have mastered humility perfectly. But I wanted you to understand, I can learn from anybody. I can even learn from my enemies. Those are things that we need to, to keep before us. We can learn from people who think that we're nuts because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, before, because we speak in tongues, because we follow God, at least try to follow God in every circumstance and in every situation. You see, that is something that God wants us to do, and that is humble ourselves to the point that we can learn from anyone. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says this, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Why? The humble are teachable. Let me ask you this question. Are you teachable today? Now, some of you are watching my videos. You're listening to my voice. And you're trying to follow what I say. I appreciate that. I like it. But, you know, I want to encourage you. Go to the book. Go to the Bible. Go and find out what God is actually saying to you through what some of us may speak. Receive it, but then check it out. One of the churches that really impresses me in the book of Acts, we find in the 17th chapter of Acts, it's the church at Berea. It says they readily received everything that was taught. But then they went home and they checked everything out with the word of God. I want to encourage you, check everything out with the word of God. And if something does not fit the word, then cast it out, reject it. Now, God is looking for you to be able to do the things that are necessary 
for your mind to be controlled, be under the control of the Lord Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit. And so here we are. This is the third principle that we're talking about. Never give up on learning, but always check everything out with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to bring this to an end today. I know we've talked quite a long time today, but I appreciate knowing that you are beginning to be able to take control of your own mind. Sometimes we have this attitude. God is going to take over and he is going to control my mind. You know, God is not a puppet master. He does not come in and take over. But he will lead us when we submit to him. So I'm encouraging you today. Submit to the hand of God. And God will lead you into all truth. Father, I want to thank you for this time together today. And I thank you, Lord, that you are doing all things well in our lives. And you are leading us step by step into the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. And Lord, that we are able to take this mind that we all have and take it in hand and say, you're going to submit to Jesus Christ. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you like these videos, I'm going to encourage you to, yes, like us on Facebook. And uh, you can also go to YouTube and subscribe to YouTube, Eugene May. And if you do subscribe, that helps us and can even eventually help us financially if enough people subscribe. But we're going to post this on our other Facebook page today, and then we'll be posting it on YouTube. So God bless you. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and be strong in the Lord.